one of our guests to invite Karan Gandhi, Karan Dasanj, who is the uh, author of Hidden Histories and uh, the, also one of the co-producers of our film and in the film, uh, uh, closing film has the second segment, the Karan Dasanj, we would like to invite you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Tell us about your experience. Sure, absolutely. My experience was at meeting Vicky Singh Ji. Uh, I am an author of Untold Stories, uh, the South Asian Pioneer Experience in BC. I am a daughter of a farmer. I am a daughter of a mill worker uh, who migrated in 1959. And my mother is a partition survivor as well. So there's a lot of history and roots in our family. My grandfather migrated to Canada in 1906. My husband's grandfather in 1907. So I'm a daughter of pioneers, early settler families. So it started there, telling my own family story and capturing it for our own kids. So was, that was a selfish reason why I started. But it became more than that because it was many, many other families that have this history. They built the first Godwaras in North America. They brought the culture of India to Canada, to the States. And to be able to share their stories, my job is, is, a, is being a vessel, a conduit to those stories. And that has become my seva. That is not my day job, that is my seva. It's, it's working through me. Um, and that to be able to come back here to India, our home country, our motherland, where it all started, where our people decided to take that journey and be invited back to sit amongst all of you, is the greatest blessing. And it's so meaningful to me. And I'm sitting here and I think about the thousands of women that um, came before me that didn't have a voice, that didn't leave their homes, that were homemakers, that had to burn their salas and kameez and not to be able to wear their culture proudly and to sit here amongst you today in the vibrant colors of our customary culture and speak our language and our voice and our stories is a, is a privilege. It really is. Uh, Karen has done a wonderful job on that, her book, tremendous documentation. But may I suggest uh, a new project for you? <laughs> I have been trying to look at migration of Sikh women on their own, not as wives, nor as children. Yes, yes. Can this be done? Yes, yes. Because I find very little mention of this aspect of Sikh migration, yeah. where women on their own, Sikh women, went abroad. That's a great idea. Yeah, it's absolutely a wonderful question. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. Your, your question touches on um, my own experience. When I was interviewing families, they would all start with, well, Babaji's journey was this, Babaji's contribution was this, and I had to uh, continue to ask, well, where was Bibiji? Where, where was, where was Mata during these times? And covering the Pioneer Corps' stories and their experiences is equally important and it's part of the work that we're, we're, we're committed to because they did come on their own. They did have to uh, travel with their children and, and they made their own contributions to be the first to, uh, to be in certain professions. They are the first ones to learn to drive. They had to learn a lot on their, on their own. And so I think the common thread of continuing to, to be a woman and being able to share the stories uh, of, our, of our ancestral women is truly an honor and a gift and something we don't take uh, we don't take lightly. Yes, um, to continue on what Karen has said, initially uh, in the early 1920s or earlier until the 60s, women could not go on their own. They were sponsored by their husbands and then they were able to go. But I think in the US, at least um, in the 1950s to 60s is when immigration opened up, is where women were able to go on their own as students mostly. And we do know many people who went in the 1950s and studied in the US. And I have to say that I am also one of them. I went on my own to the US in 1986. And even at that time, I was one of the few girls who went on my own um, as a, on a student visa and I managed and I got married later on after several years. And so I really commend my father for having the vision and the faith and trust in me to send me. Um, and it's not 
uh, you know, financially easy for a working class person to do that. So yes, there are many stories to answer your question. And to continue on what Karen has said, it is important to document the stories of the pioneer wives and women who first went to Canada and then to US. Uh, even in the US, women started coming in the 1920s. The first wives came in the 1920s and they had to totally change how they behaved, dressed, looked, uh, adjust in a new society. And uh, we did make a movie called Jyoti Kasuri a couple of years ago with Professor Nicole Ranganathan from UC Davis, which uh, documented the stories of the first Sikh women in California. And uh, several of them have now passed away. So we made that movie at a very good time. And I, have we showed it here? Yes, yes, last yes, year. Yes, we showed last it year. last year, Jyoti Kasuri. And it's really something worth hearing and listening to the stories of these women who farmed along with their husbands, uh, you know, do, um, drove, learned to drive tractors and farmed the land and raised their children and made a place for themselves in society. And so these stories are out there. Thank you. Thank you.